and welcome. I'm Chris Marr, Trail Genius Athlete, I'm here today to give you guys a preview of the Lifetime Tri South Beach. To do that, we're going to use the Trail Genius online interactive course map we made for the event that takes video and GPS data from my race and combines it into an effective tool to allow you guys to get prepared for your race. You, know, you can find the Trail Genius interactive map both here at southbeachtriathlon.com as well as over at trailgenius.com. I'm going to actually pop this into a new tab so we have a little more room to work. So my goal here today is to get you guys acquainted with this Trail Genius uh, interactive map of the Sobe Tri to show you some of the key points in the race. At, at any time when I'm talking about something very specific, you'll notice in the lower left hand corner a link will pop up that if you click on it, it will jump you over to the map in your own web browser so you can continue to explore on your own. Okay, let's start by zooming out so we can see the whole course. The map includes both the international and classic course, the international being the longer of the two. Both courses are using a lot of the same terrain. It's just that the international course in the red is going to be longer. Uh, then the classic in the blue, we could actually switch over the map background so we can see the colors a little better. And you can turn on and off the layers so you can see the difference. Um, the bike course being the most prominent here and you can see that when I turn on the international course that there's some extra legs that we, that we do to get, get the mileage up. Well, like any triathlon, we start out with the swim, so why don't we zoom back in and take a look at the swim course. Um, down here in this cluster of markers, this is where the finish line is located and transition. So when you get here in the morning, here's uh, T1 and T2. My T1 and T2, there's this park area here. This will be where you'll be putting, putting your equipment, and then you need to work on getting down the beach if you're doing the classic, you'll have to walk about a half mile, and to, if you're doing the international, you're going to walk the full mile down to the swim start. There's these hot spots here on the map that, that give you some video um, or photos in that particular place. For instance, in this case, we've got uh, an aerial of the classic start, and in this case, you get a, a quick preview of what it looks like when I'm walking down the beach um, in the morning. It's Miami, so it's beautiful. Uh, we can pop it big here if we want. There's really no complaints that you have to do this walk. It's a it's 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 a wonderful view, and I actually enjoyed it quite a bit, getting to take my time, make my way down to the start in the morning. But on to the start itself, which is located right here, and you'll see we've got video. If I start playing, you can watch watch how things started out for me while you track where I'm at on the course. You can see we have some aerial video showing me coming from the starting area and making my way into the surf and then I'm going to head out onto the swim course. Uh, the year I did it, you can see it's a bit windy and a bit wavy but it may be a little daunting at first but the waves aren't as bad as they seem. I actually had a lot of fun swimming in them. The nice thing is the sun you can see is to what will be your swimmer's left. So when you're sighting the buoys to swimmer's right and the shore that's to swimmer's right you won't have the glare of the sun in your eyes. So why don't we just skip to the skip to the end of the swim where we're actually coming out of the water and you can see that uh, as we come around that last booty and exit out of the water and make our way across the beach, this is me right here, you're going to work your way up through the dunes and onto some pavement that will take you into the park area where the transitions are. The Compared to a lot of races, the the run to transition is pretty short for this one and pretty simple and you can see we we actually cross a lot of the a lot of the run course here but at this point in the race there's no runners out on the course yet um, just swimmers coming in and the bikers are out um, you can see the the drone following me as I come in here as I transition onto the pavement I'm gonna round the corner and head on into transition see if I can find my bike The transition area at the South Beach Tri, while not small, is fairly easy to manage. Things are well marked so you can find your rack pretty easy. The grassy area that it's on is easy to run in bare feet. I grabbed my bike and I'm 
heading towards the bike out. Um, both uh, bike out and run out are at the north end of transition here. You can see I'm moving that way and you can see the run start is on your right. I'm going to make a left and head over to the bike start. Both are well marked. And there's, a, there's a lot of competitors so there can be a bit of a traffic jam at times but you can see I, I wait my turn, I merge in and I get to head out on the bike course. Well, the bike courses at the South Beach Tri are, are fun and fast. You can see from the elevation profile that there, there's not a lot of climbing. Most of these bumps are, are pretty minimal. You're seeing we're going from zero up to you know 12 feet, 14 feet. Most of your climbing happens when you cross these bridges. They've got a big camber to them, so you're riding up one side and then rocketing down the other. As we mentioned earlier, you can see that both the classic and international courses are, are, on, to are on top of each other. Um, if we turn off the international layer, you can see the, the shorter blue course is the classic. And we've got the main difference being this big leg here. If we get the video going and head out, you'll see that we're, we're dealing with smooth roads, um, very fast biking conditions beautiful views, beautiful views of Miami, um, you're along the water for so much of the race. Uh, it's, a, it's a great, great bike course. Um, I will make you aware of the fact that there is a couple of real sharp turns on some of these spurs. For example, this one here, you'll see we've got this little turnaround at the end here and as we approach it, you'll, you'll notice it's really well marked, really well combed. There's volunteers there. Make sure you're going the right way. There's plenty of police make taking care of traffic. Um, it's it's good to be aware of, but it's really easy to manage. There there's one here, and then and then there's another one on this spur here. And then as we approach the finish, we've come back across onto the island. We've gotten down, I and mean, again, look at these roads. So smooth, so fast. Lots of fun. You'll be able to finish up your race strong. Uh, make your way into the final streets here. Plenty of fans cheering you on as you get back to the transition area here and you're able to get out and get onto the run course. Okay, we've made it to T2. It's always a little tricky getting off your bike. I, uh, I prefer to take my feet out of my shoes while I'm riding, so I'm actually running barefoot right now. Um, you can see a gentleman up in front of me there is doing the same thing. Um, again, with the grassy transition area, this isn't a problem. It was easy to easy to run to my rack. Again, as we talked before, all the rack ends are, are well labeled. So um, even though it's a pretty big transition, there's volunteers there to help too. And you should be able to find your rack without too much trouble. So I, I found my row and I head down here and rack my bike and switch over to my run stuff. See my spot there. And I work on getting my bike shoes on, get my bike hat on, and heading out onto the run. So once again, I'm heading for the north end, just like when I was going out on the bike. You can see lots of spectators along the boardwalk, especially as the getting later in the morning. Lots of people to cheer you on, keep you motivated. You're looking for that that arch again at the north end. Once you pass through there, you can head out onto the boardwalk where the run course will be and work on getting yourself a nice fast run time. So now on to the run. Just like the bike, the international run is longer than the classic run, but they are on top of each other. There's just extra, extra for the international as we zoom out get a better view of uh, both International and Classic will head north up the boardwalk. You can see the blue line going up there. But the, the International ends up going south too. You can see we, we head down this way. Gets our, gets our run up to 6.2 as opposed to 4. You can see the run is along the beach as we head north. Um, it's two-way traffic, so there's runners heading north and runners heading back south. Uh, there's also uh, the boardwalks open to the public, so there's not a lot of people out in the morning, but there are some. you got to make sure you, you avoid. And 
while the course you can see again like the run is pretty flat uh, there is it is somewhat technical in the sense that it's pretty twisty and turny if we we look at this look at this course there's lots of ins and outs and you can see I'm making my way around a, a lot of different not so much obstacles but again it's not a straight run as we uh, jump jump to the far north end of the course you can see uh, you can see it can, can get a little congested at times but you just you, everybody works together um, make sure people can pass when they need to you approach the turnaround you're gonna have again volunteers and plenty of signage and plenty of cones so once you get there you can make your turn and head back south as you uh, as you find yourself getting back towards the transition area they're gonna route you away from the boardwalk and out onto actual beach so it's important to be aware that you'll be on the, the hard pavement but you're also going to do some stretches on actual sand. This stretch along here, the sand is, is really well packed from vehicles driving over it. Um, as we move further on here, you'll see that we get into real soft sand. So this is where we, we turn off of that hard pack sand and you can see we're, we're back near where the swim came out and we actually make our way out onto softer sand, the more challenging sand. Um, you can see we sort of zigzag through here and then we we head on to a stretch of course that's that it's important to be aware of because it's 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 different especially after you've been on the hard pack for for a couple miles now so as you get further down to the south end of the course you're going to come off of that soft sand and they're going to transition you back onto a hard surface again and from here till the next turnaround at at the far end of the international course um, you'll be on hard pack now You'll then turn around and make your way back. Uh, it's an out and back course, so you make your way back, and you'll have to to do this sandy stretch again. Um, this time, you'll be you'll be heading for the finish line. You'll be you'll be finishing in the sand essentially. So as we jump ahead to the finish here, like I said, uh, coming across the sand, making that final push, feeling the burn in your legs, but the finish line is in sight. You're gonna you're gonna come in to big spectator area now you're really going to be here in the chairs and everybody's going to be giving that extra motivation to, to push to the finish um, there's a last little kick here and around a corner and you come into the finish banner and and what is the finishing expo you can see I'm chasing a fella down oh no oh, oh got got past there right at the end you know it gets to be it's to be a duking duking it out there at the finish but there it is across the finish line and there's plenty of volunteers waiting for you. Take your time and chip, give you a thing of water, get your medal. It's all waiting for you at the end there. If we zoom into the finish line area, you'll see we have a number of hot spots to give you an idea of what's what's what this particular part of the event looks like, which is pretty busy and, and, and pretty cool. We've got, uh, for instance, uh, a 360 pano uh, that'll pop up like the other ones you can make it big if you want and you get an idea of what this the, the finish line expo is and all the people there you can get a 360 360 photo here in addition to that we've got some some other hot spots here we've got some nice drone footage a little flyover of the finish line area Everything you need to get a sense of what it's going to be like to finish up at the South Beach Try. It is it is one of the the better finishes, I must say. A beautiful scenery. The weather's beautiful. Uh, the the classic sandcastle finish. You get your photo in front of that. Lots of food. Lots to drink. Lots of people. A um, great great way to finish a great race. So that's our preview of the Lifetime Tri South Beach event. We hope you're now more acquainted with both the course and our Trail Genius interactive map. You can click the, map, the link in the corner to load the map in your own web browser and start to explore on your own. There's all the video and GPS data you need to prepare yourself for the, the upcoming Lifetime Tri South Beach. All that's left to do now is pop on over to the website and sign up. We hope to see you there.